for record. Okay, so tonight's session then, IOPCS, lights, sheets and sounds, we'll do this as part one. Um, part one, we're going to cover more at the day skipper level, and then part two, which is on Thursday evening, we're going to cover some more of the yacht master level. So tonight I'm looking at some of the more simple lights, shapes and sounds, and then we'll develop those on Thursday night for the next session. Okay, so this is what we're going to be taking a look at this evening. Different types of vessel day shapes um, and just hopefully demystifying what they all are for you. An introduction to some of the sound signals, so for manoeuvring and warning. Um, a little look at the different types of vessel lights, so reasonably what are our lights made up of. Some basic vessel lights and we'll talk about the working lights as well, so when we start making the vessels do more things. And we'll also look at rule 18, which is the vessel hierarchy. And I'll hopefully give you a mnemonic as to how you can remember the vessel hierarchy, which is about who gives way to who. Okay, so the more maneuverable and the least maneuverable. And at the end, what we will also have is a quick quiz. There are 16 questions at the end, all on one side. Hopefully, if you've got your notebooks and pens ready, then uh, you will be able to tell me what they are at the end. Okay, so that is what we are looking at this evening. Okay, so let's kick off with the individual day shapes. Okay, so day shapes is relatively straightforward because no matter what they are, they are made up of these five things. Okay, so we have a ball shape, we have a diamond shape, we have a cylindrical shape, a downward cone and an upward cone. And all we do is put them together in conjunction with each other. But it is these five basic shapes that we are going to start looking at. Okay. Now the ball is associated mostly with an anchored vessel and I'm going to do anchored vessels along with the ground vessels and so on um, uh, on the Thursday session on part two of this session. So I'm not going to do those this evening. But what I am going to focus on is some of the more simple shapes. So if we take a look, let's start with first up, what kind of day shape would we be putting on our power boat? Well, none, okay? So it's quite obvious when we're looking at the power boat that actually we can see it, so we don't need to add a day shape to that, okay? Next up, we're gonna look at, well, what happens if we're a sailing vessel? And for some reason, we're going to be using our auxiliary engine, so we're going to be using the engine as well as having the sails up. In the hierarchy, power gives way to sail, and we need to be able to make sure that as a sailing vessel, if we are using our engine, that bumps us back down the hierarchy again to the bottom, we need to be able to demonstrate to everybody that we are not really a sailboat, we are a power boat, okay? So we have a downward facing cone or a motoring cone. Um, it's also colloquially known as I have an examiner on board, okay? Because the vast majority of times that it's hoisted is when you're on an official RYA course or when you have an examiner on board, okay? I've spent a good 40 minutes or so looking for one on a yacht once. So um, if I see a sailing vessel with its sails up, there's no, there's no need for it to show it if it's got its sails down, but if it's got its sails up, I would be expecting to see this motoring cone hoisted in the forward part of the vessel to give me an idea if I am a power booter, that actually I am now on a par with this other vessel because we're the same type of vessel, okay? So that's my day shape if I'm a motoring, um, if I'm a sailing vessel motoring, okay. Next up then, I've got my fishing trawling and here you can see we're starting to put the cones together. So we've got this vessel over here, which is trawling. So it's trawling on the side of the vessel and we've put a cone facing a cone. So an upturned cone facing a downward facing cone. Okay, and so in this one, we've got the cones facing in. Quite often what you will see the vessels do is hoist a basket in their rigging. So it's a, a fishing basket, which is that similar shape but actually it's a downward facing cone and upward facing cone to give you an idea that the vessel is either fishing or trawling, okay? Can't tell the difference other than where the things are. So trawling, we're looking mostly at the stuff coming out of the side. Fishing, we're probably looking at nets going out the back. So this vessel here, again, has the same downward facing cone, upward facing cone, so it has a, the cones put together, but this one also has an additional cone to tell you that its gear is extended over 150 meters behind the vessel, 
okay so that's quite important when it starts to put an additional cone up there we've got the gear extended over 150 meters behind the vessel okay so as a boater what does as the skipper what do i do that actually i've got to give this a nice wide berth because there's lots of nets in the water okay so that's our fishing and our trawling day shapes next up we're going to have a look at our constraint by draft so when are we going to see a vessel constrained by its draft? Well, these are likely to be large-ish vessels coming into a port where they are constrained by their draft in a particular channel and they're not able to move out of that channel. Okay? So we have a black cylinder. And one way I remember it is that a cylindrical can of Guinness is black draft Guinness. Okay, So I can have my cylindrical constrained by draft draft black can of guinness okay so that's one way that i remember if it's got a cylinder hoisted in its rigging it's constrained by its draft okay so the vessel can move in any direction it likes it can go forwards it can go backwards it can stop but actually it is constrained on a particular channel by its draft okay so a black draft can of guinness the way i remember it we've got our restricted inability to maneuver and there are actual definitions of when a vessel is restricted in its ability to maneuver it's restricted its ability to maneuver when the nature of its work restricts its maneuverability so it will be doing something it may be engaged in underwater operations it may be that it's um, got divers it may be that it's mark laying there are lots of it could be dredging it could be something that's towing with a tow that severely restricts its ability to maneuver but the vessel is doing something that restricts its ability to maneuver okay so it's not always restricted it's just restricted when it's working and doing whatever its job is. So on this one, we've got ball, diamond, ball. OK, so we're going to put them together and you will see this hoisted above the superstructure here. So a ball, a, the diamond is restricted between the two balls. OK, so ball, diamond, ball. On this vessel, this is an, a vessel conducting underwater operations. And what it does is it gives you the good side of the vessel to pass and the bad side of the vessel to pass. So let's say this particular vessel was doing some underwater operations off its port side here. It's got the two balls to say stop and it's got the two diamonds on this side to say go. And you can start to see here where from the last slide I said we just add all the, the different shapes together to make different symbols. Here we've got ball, diamond, ball, two balls and two diamonds and we pass on the diamond side. So if we see a vessel like this, it might not be obvious to us what it is doing, but this skipper has said, I want you to take, if I want you to pass me down this side of the vessel. Okay, so that's my restricted inability to maneuver. Last up on the day shapes for this evening, then we're going to talk about our not under command. Okay, so this is a vessel who cannot comply with the regulations. So for some reason, it cannot get out of your way. OK, so, for example, it could be that it is becalmed and it's drifting. It could be that its steering gear is stuck in gear. For some reason, it is unable to comply with the regulations. And you'll see later it goes to the very top of the tree as far as our give way goes. And in this one, we've got the two balls sitting on top of the vessel. OK, so these are bad. They would be visible from all around the vessel, as would all of these. Um, and we've got the two balls sitting on the top for a vessel not under command. OK, so that's a quick canter around some of the more simple day shapes. There are some others that we'll talk about on Thursday, but that's mostly our simple day shapes. OK, so now we're going to take a quick look at terminology and size for our sound signals okay so the equipment that you would have on board for your sound signals consists of the ship's whistle a bell and a gong and it depends on how big you are as to what you need to take with you okay so we can have our ship's whistle here ship's horn ship's whistle we've also got a bell and we've also got a gong okay so the larger vessels have to carry all of them smaller vessels just have to have a ship's whistle or an efficient means of making a sound signal okay so hopefully if i play this for you if i can get it going
So hopefully you all heard that sound signal and I've set it up correctly. Good, okay, good, some thumbs up and some nodding. So we either have a short blast or we have a prolonged blast, okay? We're gonna make our sound signals up of a short blast or numbers of that or a prolonged blast. Prolonged blasts were at four to six seconds duration, so that was that long one that you heard first. A short blast is a one second duration and that was the one that you heard second, okay? So what does that mean? Well, actually, the bigger the vessel, the deeper the tone. So there are rules and regulations, and you can go look them up in the annexes, but there are rules and regulations about the vessel's tone and how deep it has to be depending on its size. So here, if I play this for you. Okay, now I don't expect you to remember quite what frequency they were to recognize them, but a really deep ship's whistle is going to be a big vessel at 200 meters or more. So if you hear a really deep tone, you're likely to look over your shoulder and find quite a large vessel behind you, okay? So it gives you an idea of the size of the vessel that's approaching, but who needs to carry what, okay? So this depends on what vessel you are on. If we are less than 12 meters, so some of the smaller fishing boats, some of the smaller ribs, some of the smaller um, sailing vessels, you just have to have some means of making an effective sound signal. And that could be an air horn, it could be one of these that are super, super loud, okay? And really quite clever pieces of kit to carry, particularly if you're limited on space. That's what it looks like when it's folded up. When you pull it out, you blow into that little um, uh, black hole there and it makes a very, very loud sound for you. So we certainly carry those on our ribs because they take up little space, don't have very many working parts and are pretty reliable, okay? So that's under 12 meters. If we're over 12 meters, but less than 20 meters, we have to have a ship's whistle. So your vessel has to be fitted with your ship's whistle. Okay. If we're over 20 meters, but less than 100 meters, we need a whistle and a bell. And then if we are over 100 meters, we need a whistle and a bell and a gong. Okay. And when we start looking at the symbols, our signals that that would, we would use these for when we are perhaps at anchor or if we are ground, then this is what we are going to make those symbols up from. Okay, but this is just a quick look at some of the basic ones tonight. So maneuvering and approaching another vessel then, okay, we've got our rib here and if we want to turn to port, we're going to make two short blasts. If we want to turn to starboard, we're going to make one short blast. Now one way that I remember this, if I just go grab my pen, text up is that on a clock you have 11 o'clock there you would have uh, one o'clock on this side and you would have 12 o'clock in the middle okay pop that a little bit further over all right and the way i remember this is if i am turning to port i am turning towards 11 o'clock and there are two numbers there so i sound two short blasts if I am turning to starboard, there is only one number there. I only sound one short blast, okay? If I've got my engines engaged in a stone propulsion, not necessarily going backwards, I could be using them to slow down, then actually what you'll hear are three short blasts. So if you've been lucky enough to go somewhere like Sydney and you look at the Manly Harbour ferries going in and out of the quay there, when they are ready to go, they will always park three times, three short blasts on their ship's whistle to let you know that they have their engines engaged in a stern propulsion and are about to back out of their space. Okay. So this is the one that most people would probably say that they know. We've got two ribs on a bit of a collision course here. We've got one rib then saying, I am unaware of your intentions. So technically I'm unaware of your intentions. You are taking insufficient avoiding action and it's at least five short blasts, okay? And effectively what it means is this. So from a comic book perspective, you're not allowed to swear in comic books and that's what they would tend to put up or it's our very angry looking emoji, okay? So if you have a vessel who is not taking the sufficient avoiding action, you will hear it pop five times, okay? So next up, hopefully I will be able to give you, if I clear the drawings off, I can just play this. 
So hopefully you can hear it popping, pop five times. And again. And it's just popped five times and five times again. And what you will see is the reason that he is unhappy is that right here is a very small 20-ish foot boat. There's about six people on board. That's that right in the middle of his fairway. He's about to come around that corner and turn up here. And this little vessel, teeny tiny, believe me, if you can't quite see it, it really is there. Okay, this video is on our, um, our, our YouTube, I think. Um, and here is the ferry coming in the Isle of Inish, more coming into Milford Haven. And these guys are sitting looking at the ferry. Okay, so even though it's popped five times and popped five times again, if I pull it up a little bit to here, what you will be able to see, you've now got the fishing vessel here and the ferry all in the same picture. He's given up popping his horn now because quite clearly they weren't doing anything about it. But actually, he's had to take significant avoiding action in order to try and get around that turn okay so i would say on the whole if you hear somebody popping five times they are more than likely going to be a commercial vessel okay they are more likely to be something like this where there are rules and restrictions about not getting in the ways of the ferries but uh, but this was yeah quite a, a quite an interesting one to see they did just make it around the turn and the vessel never budged an inch okay so when we approach a bend or an obstruction, something like this, this is Grey Stones Harbour here, when we approach a bend or an obstruction, what we are going to do is pop our ship's whistle one long blast. Effectively, we're saying, hello, and we would expect to hear another vessel pop, hello, back, okay? So from that point of view, if we pop one long blast and we hear nothing, we can assume that around the corner, there is nothing there, okay? So we've got some short blasts about maneuvering and one long blast about a vessel approaching a bend or an obstruction, okay? So that's a quick, quick, quick canter around our sound signals for tonight. We're gonna move on to our vessel lights, okay? So here we've got the different types of lights. So what do you have on board your vessel? Well, you're going to have a mast headlight, which is an unbroken arc of 225 degrees. Okay. You're going to have side lights, which give you an unbroken arc of 112 and a half degrees. And on this, we've got our port light is red, our starboard light is green, and we're looking down plan view on top of our vessel. So 112 and a half degrees for our red light, 112 and a half degrees for our green light. Okay. We also have our stern light here, which is 135 degrees. And so they total 360 degrees, okay? And they are the basic lights, okay? A mast headlight, a side light, or a stern light. You'll also hear it called a steaming light, okay? That implies that we are under power, but actually it's a mast headlight because we can have other mast headlights as well, all right? So a mast headlight, side light, and a stern light. What else can we have? We can have a towing light, which we would put on the stern, which would be a yellow one. We can have an all round light, which is an unbroken arc of 360 degrees. And that's where we start talking about our working lights. So when the vessels start having a job or they start indicating to you that they are moving up the hierarchy, they tend to put the all round lights on. We can also have a flashing light, which is usually 120 beats or more per minute, okay? And from a colors wise, we're looking at white, yellow, green, red, yellow flashing, and there can be an optional white light. Okay, that's what you're going to see this evening. Okay, you can also have flashing blue lights if you've got police vessels or if you've got your own light boats. Okay, so let's keep it simple. Let's start with the really simple ones. Okay, so we've got our power driven vessel, our sail vessel, we're looking down on top of them, but we've got this chap over here in his kayak. So this is for a vessel under seven meters, capable of no more than seven knots. It just has to have one white light. So if it is a kayaker, a paddle boarder, a dinghy, or whatever it's out at night, it needs to, and it's under seven meters, under seven knots, ideally it needs a lantern or a torch or something to indicate that it is there, okay? 
Then we move on to our sailboat and working down on top of our sailboat here, we've got our port light, our starboard light and our stern light. Um, it's either a bicolor at the bow with a stern on the stern light on the, the, the stern of the vessel, or we can have a tricolor at the top of our mast, okay, where it's one light, one lantern, if you like, that is all three colors. When we move to our power driven vessel, then it's the same as our sailing vessel, but now we've added a mast headlight, but you'll see that the mast headlight is in 225 degrees. So I will only see the mast headlight from these sectors. I won't see it from the stern, okay? So what do we need to know? All right, when we're talking about different types of vessels, some we've already mentioned, we need to understand when we're looking at lights, what is the type of vessel that I'm looking at? What is the size of the vessel? What's the aspect? What is it doing? What's its status? And does it have any additional lights? Okay, and I keep it really simple. So every time I'm looking at a picture of lights, I should be asking myself these questions. So for anyone studying Yacht Master and looking at doing the Yacht Master exams, um, you would be expected to have an answer for all five of those questions for every single picture that you look at, okay? So the type of vessel then, we could be a sailing vessel, we could be a power driven vessel, or we could be a vessel engaged in underwater operations. We can be um, under 50 meters or over 50 meters. Okay, what aspect am I looking at? I could be looking at the stern aspect, the bow, the port, the starboard, and I will see different lights depending on which way around you are. What status are you? You could be underway, you could be making way. So underway is I'm no longer fast to the shore at anchor or aground. I could be making way, I'm being propelled through the water using my, um, my oars, my sails or my engine. I could be not making way, I could be a vessel that is out, not fast to the ground, so not anchored or aground or fast to the shore, but just sitting in the water, not making way, not being propelled. So they're the options for my status. And then the additional lights are similar to the day shapes we had earlier. I could be engaged in fishing or trawling. I need to start putting some lights on those basic vessels to give you a clue of what I am doing. Could be towing, pushing, CBD constrained by draft, restricted ability to maneuver, NUC not under command. I could be engaged in mine clearance operations or engaged in pilot duties. Effectively, I start with the basics, which are these, and then I start adding lights to them. Okay, so I'm either a sailing boat or a power driven vessel. If there are more lights than you see on the screen, it's either bigger or busier. Okay, that's the easiest way. If there are many, many, many lights on the screen and it's lit up like a Christmas tree, run away bravely, okay? Because it's bigger than you, it's busier than you, and it probably isn't very maneuverable. So these are your basic lights that we start looking at. So let's start with our sailing vessels, okay? Let's start with our sailing vessels under 20 meters. I've left the one, two, three, four, five up here so you can have a look at them as we go. In this case, I'm sailing under 20 meters, so I'm going to have some side lights and a stern light, and I can combine it into one lantern at or near the top of the mast, okay? So this is my tricolor. So if I am looking at the side, so the port side of a sailing vessel, I will only see a red light. If I'm looking from ahead, I'll see red and a green. If I'm looking from the stern, I'll only see a white light. Now, when I start to get slightly bigger, I get some more additional lights that I can show, okay? So in this particular instance, what you'll see is that I've still got the same navigation light. So I've got my port, my starboard, I've got my stern light, but actually at the top of the mast now, what I have done is I've shown my additional lights, which is an all around red over an all around green. Okay, what I cannot do is combine these all into one lantern like I did at the top here. So if you can see red over green like this, you're looking at a fishing vessel that's over 20 meters in length showing its additional lights. Okay, so that's our sailing vessels. Let's have a look at our power driven vessels then. So top one here, we've got our power driven vessel which is under 50 meters in length. We've got our side lights here so our navigation lights our port light and our starboard light and our stern light and now um, from a sailing vessel we have now added our mast headlight here we've added a single mast headlight 225 degrees so from the side i'm now seeing a white and a red from a head i'm seeing a white plus my navigation lights but from a stern i'm still only seeing the white because remember this is a forward looking light and so from the stern i'm only going to see the stern lights 
what happens if I make that boat a bit bigger? And at night, it's going to be handy if I can tell it's a bit bigger. So I add another masthead light. Everything else is the same. I've got my navigation lights, my stern light, and now I have two forward looking mast headlights. So from the side of the vessel, I'm going to be able to see two white lights and a red light. And of course, as the vessel is moving, these will all be moving across the screen at the same time. But this is now giving me an idea that the forward bit of the vessel is here and the rear bit of the vessel is here. So from ahead, I'm going to see both the, the white lights and the navigation lights. But remember from the stern, from dead astern, I still only see one white light because I only see the stern lights. Yeah, these are forward looking mast headlights. They're not all around lights. Okay, so that's my power driven vessel. All still with me? Let's make it a little bit more complicated then. Okay, let's add the fishing and the trawling vessels in. Okay, so fishing and trawling again, type of vessel size, aspect status, additional lights. Let's go with some relatively simple ones. This one here is our trawler. Okay, this is our trawler. He's showing an all round green over an all round white here. Okay, and you can see his port light, so he's traveling across the page that way. Okay, so green over white is our trawling, and we've got our fishing boat at the top here, which is red over white. You say, Well, how can you remember that? I think of frying fish being a hot thing. So if I have got red over white, they're frying tonight. Okay, so they're looking at a red over white for our fishing. In the same way as we had an additional day shape, if the gear is extended, it would be really handy if you could tell you that at night as well. So otherwise, how would you know? So I could also put an additional white light up here to tell you that my gear is extended over 150 meters. This chap in the middle here is a particular type of fishing and they have flashing yellow lights that sit one above the other. Okay, so you would see his normal fishing lights, you would also see his two flashing yellow lights and they would flash in sequence. Okay, again at about 120 beats per minute. So that's our fishing. There's lots more if you read the books about having your nets fastened on obstruction and so on and so forth, but we're just looking at the basics for tonight. So moving up then, we've got restricted in our ability to manoeuvre. So our ram boat, this is rule 27, okay? And what have we added now? Well, if we take away these lights here, this is just a power driven vessel, size probably over 50 meters in length. We've got our two white lights. Aspect, we're looking at the port side of the vessel, status underwear making way. The additional lights now show that he is restricted in his ability to manoeuvre. And previously we had our day shape ball, diamond ball. Now we've got red, white, red. So as soon as you see anything with red, white, red, the white light restricted between the two reds, that is giving you an idea. And these are all round lights, so you should see them from all the way around the vessel. Okay. So this picture here shows you what he looks like from the bow. But in this case, we've got our port light, our starboard light. We've got our two mast headlights at the top here, and we've also got our all round red, white, red. Okay. So say what you see. I work on it as a game of catchphrase. What is it? It is a power driven vessel. Why? Well, it's got navigation lights and it's got at least one mast headlight. It's a power driven vessel over 50 meters in length because it's got two mast headlights. What aspect? In this case, bow on. Its navigation lights are on and its mast headlights are on, so it's underway and making way. And its additional lights then say, and it is restricted in its ability to maneuver. Okay, so if you work your way through this, you should always have an answer to the questions. Okay, this one at the top here, we're seeing the stern of this vessel. And the reason we're not seeing a stern light is because this vessel is not making way so it's underway but not making way so this could be a vessel out perhaps doing some mark laying it could be out dredging it could just be out diving doing a drift dive where it's not under its own propulsion okay so that's our restricted inability to maneuver our constrained by draft remember we had our black cylindrical can of guinness so our, our black cylinder now again the lights for the main vessel are the same he is a power driven vessel he is over 50 meters in length, two mast headlights, showing his port side, underway and making way. And now I have my additional lights to show me he is constrained by his draft, which is three all round red lights. 
So from no matter where I am, I should be able to see it. So from the stern, I can see it here. And from the bow, I can see it here. Okay. But again, work on it as a game of catchphrase. Say what you see. I see navigation lights and a steaming and a mast headlight. Therefore, it must be a power driven vessel. It's got two mast headlights. It must be a big power driven vessel over 50 meters. Yeah, it's aspect, this one bow on, status, everything is on, so it's underway and making way. Additional lights, it's constrained by its draft, because it's only going to switch those on when it becomes constrained by its draft. Not under command, then, is the final one we're going to take a look at. Um, <clears throat> this, we've got our type of vessel, then. Well, if we look at it, it's not very clear. We've got no navigation lights. We've got no masthead lights. All we've got are two all round red lights. Okay, so in this instance, we have a vessel which has um, become not under command for some reason. It's not being propelled through the water because it doesn't have its mast headlights or its navigation lights on. So perhaps here is a good example. We've got a yacht that's becalmed. Okay, it's becalmed, it doesn't have any wind, it doesn't have any engine, and therefore it is not under command. Rule 27. Okay, are we going to be able to tell the size of the vessel? not unless it has actually got its mast headlights on. Okay, so resume recording. So this is my hierarchy, okay? And think of it as going from the least maneuverable at the top to the most maneuverable at the bottom, okay? And this is my rule 18. So how can you remember it? Well, we've always used the rhyme, no real call for sail powered seaplanes, okay? So NRC FSPS. At the very top, we've got not under command. That's where the N comes from, because if they cannot comply with the regulations, they must go right to the top of the tree and everybody has to give way to them. Next one down, we've got restricting the ability to maneuver. Probably can't move very far, okay? Then our constrained by draft is still able to go forwards and backwards and stop, but probably not be able to go left or right. Then we've got our commercial fishing or trawling. So not you just out with a couple of mates on your boat with some rods hanging over the back. This is commercial fishing or trawling. Then sailing, not motoring or motor sailing. Okay, this is just sailing. Then we have our power boat or our motor sailor here and our seaplane down at the bottom. So if you are a sailing boat, you have to give way to all of these, but you would expect the power boat to give way to you. If I'm a power boat, I would expect to give way to all of these, but I'd expect a seaplane to give way to me. Okay. If I'm sitting in the middle and I'm a commercial skipper of one of these vessels, I would know that if I was a constrained by draft skipper, I would be giving way to either of these vessels, but I would be expecting everybody below to give way to me. Okay. So if you take the first letter, no real call for sail powered seaplanes, that's one easy way of remembering it. Okay, so that's rule 18, the hierarchy. What I'm going to do is just pop us on to. Okay, so this is tonight's quiz then. We've got 16 questions and uh, we've had a quick look at them. We're going to come up with what we think they may be. So they're either day sheets, lights or sound signals where we've got long sound signals or short sound signals and anything on a black background or a blue background is looking at it being a light as well. Okay. So let's see how we did. Okay, I'll pop the answers up there for you. There we go. Let's start with uh, number one then. We've got one prolonged blast. And in this instance, we're looking at a vessel approaching a bend or an obstruction. Number two then, we're just seeing red and green. So if it's just red and green with no whites, it must be a sailing vessel. And we're looking at that sailing vessel coming towards us. For number three, then, we had the two all-round red lights, which is a vessel not under command. Vessel number four, we've got a yacht with its uh, motoring cone up, so this is a vessel motor sailing. For vessel number five, we have green over white, and we also have the red and the green coming towards us, so this is a vessel engaged in trawling under 50 metres, bow aspect. Our fishing vessel here, We've got a fishing vessel with gear extended over 150 meters. The red over white is the fishing. So remember I said um, hot fish frying. So red is hot, red hot fish frying. And the white light gives us the clue that it's got its gear extended over 150 meters. 
Five short blasts. I am unaware of your intentions. You are taking insufficient avoiding actions. It's at least five short blasts. Number eight, relatively straightforward. We've got a white, a red, and a green, and we've got a power-driven vessel, so PDV, power-driven vessel, coming towards us bow aspect under 50 meters because there's only the one mast headlight. Vessel number nine, then, is constrained by its draft. Three all-round reds, and we're looking at the stern aspect of that vessel. Would we be able to tell how long the vessel was? No, because we can't see any of its mast headlights. But if it's going away for us and we're behind it, we don't need to know how long the vessel is. This white one here is the stern of any vessel. It could also be a vessel under seven meters, under seven knots, okay, with a stern light of any vessel. Ball diamond ball, we have the day shape here for restricted in my ability to manoeuvre. So the nature of my work makes me restricted in my ability to manoeuvre. One short blast then, I am turning to starboard. At the bottom here then, we've got a power driven vessel under 50 metres in length. This vessel is underway and it's showing its starboard aspect. It's giving me its green light. Three short blasts, my vessels are, and my engines, sorry, are engaged in a stern propulsion. This one here, constrained by draft, one black cylinder, so a black draft can of Guinness. And then this one was the more complicated, this was 16 here, which has got a red over green, so it's a sailing vessel over 20 metres, showing its additional lights. Okay, so let's go. Uh, that's the end of tonight's session. So just before I stop the recording, we have got our weather workshop on Saturday the 27th. Um, that's bookable online. That starts at 9.30 and it's around three, three and a half hours. Interactive session with fewer people and we're going to be looking at all aspects of weather from weather systems to interpreting synoptic charts and how we can read the weather um, for the, for to, to make our sailing the best that we can be. Uh, light shapes and sounds part two. So this is the introduction. On Thursday night we're going to start taking some of these to a little bit more of an advanced level and looking at vessels um, who are a little bit more obscure. Um, so perhaps most of these would sit mostly within some of the day skipper syllabus, just starting to move into yacht master syllabus. Um, and some of the ones that we'll look at things like air cushion vessels and so on and so forth, minesweepers, we'll have a look at on Thursday. So that's tonight's session.